All right, let's go. Hello, everybody. Hope everybody's having a wonderful day today. It's the first day of the rest of your life. You know the old saying. Got some interesting topics to talk about today. Maybe do an account review somewhere. Got some GACs to do. Get through those. That should be interesting. We got the uh, big old nasty Darth Revan team to deal with on the Loquitur account. So see if we can make it through that. Bunch of cool people over here showing up in chat already. <clears throat> Bard Restroom says morning. Fellhammer started farming nest. All right. Mata McCurry says good evening. <clears throat> Going with a cauliflower flavored lightsaber today. Staying away from carbs. <laughs> uh, there's probably a lot of other flavors you could pick besides cauliflower. I like cauliflower though. I like cauliflower. I like broccoli too. So I even like asparagus. I like asparagus when it's, you know, kind of seared and caramelized and still a little bit crunchy. I don't like it when it's uh, mushy or when it's cooked to, to the point where it tastes like a, a piece of wood. So cooked correctly, asparagus is wonderful. But an asparagus favorite flavored lightsaber, I don't know. I think that'd be pushing it. <clears throat> if I didn't know better, I would have guessed you were visiting my place of work this week. Dad joke warning. Uh-oh. <laughs> Jack Slash says deploy the likes. <clears throat> Today with 10 battles, I got 28 nest shards. Holy cow, that's a lot. Double drops. Double drops helping us out. All right. Let's see. Why is it that we don't have the window capture pulling through here? Need that Darth Loquitur account up. All right. You guys got any questions for me today? Affilian says he just got 85. That's nice. Good work there. If you got questions or comments, throw them up front. Let's get some questions answered. We've got a couple numbers for accounts that we can review. Start with that. Uh, start with that while you guys are thinking of questions. All right, let's take a look at uh, Blazel's Matt Dark Alkalite. <clears throat> what is your triangle on nest? I think my triangle on nest is offense right now. <clears throat> what is your plan for the Lokwater account after C? Do you plan for class, CLS? Um, no, I think uh, Revens. Revens seem like the best plan. Circle back around, grab those. They're great for PvP. It's Jedi. It's Sith. It'll strengthen both of those factions for me, give me better teams. Then I can pull Malak out, build him, make some use of that guild event token currency that I've been saving up. So that's most likely what's next. So it'll be C, then some stabilization characters like the Armorer and stuff like that to make C functional. Maybe Treya. We'll see. And then we'll go into the Revens. Nihilus says, hello, he's busy destroying our living room and houseplants. <laughs> Naughty Nihilus. That cat can jump, let me tell you what. That dude jumped like two feet in the air. I was playing around with him the other day and he just took a flying jump and it was like pretty impressive for a little kitten. <clears throat> jumping cat. Turkish van jumping cat. All right, so we've got a guy at 3.5 million galactic power, 2 million in characters, 1.5 in fleet. 
That seems pretty good. How old is Nihilus? Is he a newborn kitten or a rescue? He's he's neither. Um, uh, I don't know. He's like three months old. So the uh, <clears throat> it's a uh, yeah, it's a cat that we had to pay for. It's a purebred Turkish van. He's uh, three months old or so, I think. So he's not a kitten, kitten, but he's old enough to. Um, be separated from his mama now and find a new home. So, yeah, um, <clears throat> the other two cats we have are both rescue cats, and uh, the cat that passed away a couple months ago is also a rescue cat. Yep. All right, so this guy's got a uh, pretty good balance between ships and characters, 42 and fleet, 304 in characters. <clears throat> 13 weeks old. All right. Thank you, sweetheart. Darth Treya. Darth Nihilus's mama. <laughs> old enough to destroy the house. I asked him the other morning. I, he was just sitting there chilling, eating some food, and I asked him why the world wasn't destroyed yet. He just gave me this look like, eh, working on it. We're working on it. <laughs> All right, so over here in ships, we've got uh, relics on Tide Advanced, ETA, one relic on the shuttle, Extinction with three stars and a relic character. These ships are always, like, brutal for galactic power because it's not that effective as a ship, and you have to pay 50,000 galactic power for it. Try to avoid those kinds of ships if you can. If you're going to build the ship, go all the way to seven stars. If you're not going to build the ship, um, you know, leave it unactivated. Don't even start. That's my advice on ships always. Geo's at gear 12, but he's over 3 million and he needs four fleets. And folks, I'm not, I'm not seeing the groundwork for four fleets here. So Negotiator, Chimera, Executrix, Endurance... Home one, but a small Akbar. So his Galactic Republic probably go with the Negotiator. Probably has an Empire fleet. He's got this TIE Bomber, and he can put Vader with that. Maybe put this in there. Houndstooth is low gear. Yeah... Okay, so let's build a second really good fleet. <clears throat> I mean, we can we can have one bad fleet on defense. We can have two bad fleets on defense, but then we need two good fleets on offense. And I don't think the Geos, the way he has the Geos set up here, are cutting it as a good offense. You've got the Relic Vader ship. So I'm going to recommend build this Hound's Tooth. Build, I, the Houndstooth is built. Get the Bosk. Get the Bosk at least gear 12. Get him to gear 12. Get this passive maxed out. That ship will do a lot better for you. Work on your pilotless ships and work on this Gauntlet Starfighter. So if you do Gauntlet, the TIE Bomber, and Vader's ship, or the shuttle as a starting three, and then reinforce with Vader... Either one is fine, but I feel like you need the gauntlet as a starting ship to make your um, Empire fleet really good. And the Negotiator fleet's fine. That gives you two good fleets. And then you can put Geos with Tarkin on defense and something else with Home 1 or Endurance. All right, that's my thoughts over there. <clears throat> Catch up on chat for a second. Steve-O says, how are you finding the new changes so far? We'll talk about that here in a second. Okay. Character-wise, he's got Vader, Malak, Revan. So he's got both Revans. Where's Dar uh, there's Jedi Knight Revan down here. So he focused on building up the Darth Revan side of it. Bastila Sean Fallen's in here somewhere. Sith Marauder's in there. Okay, so 
I don't understand this. I would think that for Arena, the Darth Revan team, you know, if we if even with Bastila where she's at, put a little more uh, you know gear on Bastila. But if you did Darth Revan, Malak, Bastila, the Marauder, and um, um, who am I missing? Bastila, Marauder, um, the Sith Empire Trooper. So I don't know if we've got the Sith Empire Trooper in here. But you could put HK-47 in there too. That would be fine. But uh, but yeah, I would think these three relic characters, the Revan, the Malak, and the Sith Marauder, should probably get you better placement in Arena than the Padme team. I would think. 343 on Revan, that's that's plenty of speed. Malik with tenacity at 286 speed. Can't complain about that too much, right? What tenacity are we at? 177, 178. That's good. Yeah, I don't know. I I probably would be using the Revan team as the uh as the arena team. Got troopers down here, Dooku, Thrawn, Vader, Palpatine. So with all of this stuff, obviously we're going for the Sith Eternal Emperor. We've got Tarkin yet to build. And then we've got uh, some of the garbage down here somewhere, I'm sure. Krennic, there's Krennic. Sidious, Maul that we still have to build. All right, so he's going for C on this account. All right, mods look to be in pretty good working order. We had a really fast uh, 305 on Stark. It's okay. 293 on Anakin. Oop, dropping off kind of fast here, though. And then 291 on Thrawn. All right, so we definitely have an opportunity for more speedy characters. It's not horrible, but... Definitely some opportunity. How fast is Dooku? 283? I don't know. 283 is okay. And he's got the Zeta on him. Okay. So what questions does this guy have for his account? Let me see if I can take a look at that real quick. Oh, I just closed it <laughs> by accident. All right, now I gotta go try to reopen it. Sorry about that, folks. Um. Okay. Uh-oh. I've lost track of it. Where is it? Silence in the stream. That's never good. Never good to have silence in your stream. <clears throat> okay. All right. Sorry for this, folks. A little bit disorganized today. We're getting there. We're getting there. All right. Well, I, I don't... Uh... Don't see anything here yet. All right, finally found it. Should I get 
gas or go straight for C. Uh, it looks like you're going for C. It uh, <clears throat> looks like you're doing well. Gas, eventually C and geos. Yeah, I, I think that's the right path. C is the right path. And then followed by gas would be fine. Circle back around for gas. You've already got the Revens. Yeah, I do I do believe that that's a, a good route for this account. 3.5 million galactic power. We've got to get a galactic legend in here. You've really got a lot of characters here in the middle. So my advice to you is be careful starting any new teams. Really try to work with the characters that you already have and, and try to resist the urge to build a whole bunch more teams because you've really got quite a lot of galactic power here already. I think your best opportunity is to work on ships. Like I said, I think that Gauntlet Starfighter would be a good option for you. The pilotless ships are good for you. And, uh, you know, get, get two good fleets set up. And get that Bosk geared up. That's what I see for this account. All right, let me go catch up on chat. See where we're at over here. All right. So we want to talk about the nerfs. <clears throat> Was DL right? Is he better versus everyone but Galactic Legends? <clears throat> Fellhammer says, I like what you said on Under the Hollow Table about a fleet being effectively four ships. Yeah. And I didn't say it on the Under the Hollow Table, but they were talking about getting a tank for First Order. First Order doesn't need a tank. You just get in there and kill everything. I, I don't know. I, don't, I feel like First Order doesn't need a tank. You can do what you need to do, controlling it with uh, uh, ability blocks and all kinds of things, and, and just, uh, um, yeah, Silencer gets enough damage. It'd be nice to have a tank instead of that um, um, TIE SF. Maybe if you could pull a tank in at the start, that might be better. Or as your first reinforcement, it would be better, but I don't think it's required. <clears throat> Made me feel better about eventually having to build four fleets, yeah. With the new changes, I believe the old gas got extremely powerful for the requirements they need. We'll probably be able to win a Lord Vader in GC GAC. From what I understand, with the new changes, gas does stand up a lot faster. He gets back in the game which gives you less of an opportunity to kill the clones and gives him more time on the field, but then his reduced damage is really quite reduced, quite noticeably reduced, to the extent that he's um, you know, standing up and sitting down three or four times in a battle now, which uh, makes battles take longer. It's going to make him a lot less effective, and certainly when you're putting him as a Jedi into a Jedi team, it's making it far less effective from what I understand now. I don't own gas on either one of my accounts. I haven't been able to test it or do a lot of play testing or anything like that. But, um, but yeah, I think uh, from what I've heard, from what I understand, that the gas changes are um, not great, you know. Uh, I think it, you know, in that sense... He becomes a very good defensive team. If you put him on defense in threes or fives, he's going to take a long time to get through, and he still does a lot of damage. So, you know, fighting him in, uh, in Grand Arena on defense, I think is going to become more standard. Then keeping him on offense and trying to, you know, get a solo with him, that may not be as convenient as it used to be. So I think... I think, I, I, did the character lose viability? I don't think he did. I, I think he's still positioned somewhere between normal characters and Galactic Legend. He's still on that level of functionality like a cat or a Malak or, you know, um, the other characters that are in that kind of middle tier. We'll see. We'll have to see how it plays out, but I'm, I'm not, uh, <clears throat> I don't think that he became useless by any means. I've noticed the tanks are a lot thicker. Even an R3 Royal Guard was difficult to put down for my R7 Palp and Thrawn. 
Now, they didn't make any mechanical changes to how those characters work. I mean, they didn't, in some regard, make defense better, from what I understand. Supposedly, defense mod changes in Relic 9 are coming soon to benefit tanks. I don't think Relic 9 benefits tanks because of the stats on, on Relic 9 are specifically meant to benefit tanks. I think it's just that tanks get health and defense from Relic 9 stats, and they're the characters that benefit the most from those stats, so it makes a tanky character tankier. Making a damage-dealing character tankier is, is not such a big deal. I mean, it increases their survivability. But once the tank's down, their survivability is low. Increasing it from low to not quite as low isn't very impressive. So I, I think that just, just the stats that you get with Relic lend itself to tanking. Um, I, I don't understand that they're going to give like special defense stats or make Relic 9 specific to, to tanks. Waiting in anticipation, that's all, Mahana McCurry says. My payout in 40 minutes on fleet, that's why I'm this quiet. <laughs> Treya says, is this where I do a song and dance? Ah, that'd be cool. <laughs> if it gets too quiet, just show more footage of Nihilus. <clears throat> the finalizer doesn't need a tank. I have a first order fleet. And with Tarkin and Bosk is mandatory. Galactic Legends like SLKR, C, etc. Um... <clears throat> That's probably a question. I don't. I don't. Not gas. Oh, GLs in general. Since need four relic eight. He's too difficult to get with a Kylo and certain team comps. You should be able to beat a Lord Vader. Yeah, we'll see. I from reading Malik's kit or uh, uh, Darth Maul's kit. Uh, it looks like Maul is going to be more fun to play as a leader of a Mandalorian squad than sticking him in with Vader. I mean, if you don't have Vader, it looks like he's going to be a very functional character on his own. So I don't plan to go for Vader right away, so it's good to know that at least I can make use out of that Maul if I get him. <clears throat> Crumb said that Relic 9 would be oriented to help tanks be more survivable. He didn't give more sp specifics. Okay. That said, maybe they are target, uh, targeting tanks with Relic 9. Could you use Darth Vader in a Darth Revan team if you don't have Malak or Set, for example? So once you start putting characters which are not Sith Empire into that team, then you lose some crit damage. But other than that, yeah, you can put whatever you want into that team. It's fine. They don't talk about Relic 9 at all. They get questions all the time about it. Yeah. All right, so we got people in the chat, but we don't have likes, so I'm going to put up this public service announcement. Please apply your like saber to the like button. Slash it, slice it, dice it, carve it up, cut it in half. It's very satisfying. Look at this guy right here. He's cutting the like button in half, and he's uh, very pleased about himself. It works. It's easy. Easy to do. Even a child can do it. Underwater, in the sky. Um, you know, and some people are even claiming now that they do have flavored lightsabers. I, st I still wouldn't advise licking it, but, uh, you know, hey, to each his own. If your tongue gets burned, maybe you'll learn from that and won't do it again. Or maybe there's some way to protect, force protect your tongue so you can get the flavor without uh, destroying your tongue. Who knows? All right. One of the... Did anybody notice the topic in the title? Does anybody want to talk about the topic in the title? Assigning non-selfish motives. Want to talk about that for just a minute? <laughs> so, here's the deal. I think maybe it's human nature, at least for me, earlier in my life. I really tended to assign selfish motives in judging other people. And uh, I saw a couple examples of that today in, uh, in just my ordinary everyday life, and I was thinking about it. Thinking about it also for the game, for the streams, 
And I thought, you know what, I'll just talk about it. It'll be another one of Loquiter's little life lessons. And if people like it, they could listen. And if they don't, they could skip ahead to Grand Arena when they're watching the video. But basically, it comes down to this. When somebody's doing something that affects you and you're really annoyed by it, typically what you do is you immediately assign them some kind of selfish motive. Let's say you're in a store and there's a lady with two kids and, uh, you know, she's having a hard time wrangling the kids and the kids are being unruly and she's yelling at them and being obnoxious towards the kids. And you start to judge and you start to think to yourself, man, uh, you know, she's a bad mother. Why does she have to treat her kids like that? Or you know, maybe even you want to step in and say something to her. But you assign these motives to her. And the selfish motives, I'm just going to boil it down to three motives that we assign to people. They're either stupid they're lazy or they're selfish, right? So this maybe this lady is selfish. She's just thinking about herself. The kids are annoying her, and, and she's going off. But what if we didn't assign a selfish motive? What if we assigned a different motive to this lady? What if, what if we just make it up in our minds that maybe she just found out that her husband's cheating on her and she's got to raise these two kids by herself and she doesn't know what to do and she's just got off the phone with her parents and can't go back and live with them and... And she's stuck, right? So what she really needs is some help. And then instead of judging her and, and yelling at her and telling her to treat her kids better, maybe you just walk over and say, hey, can I help you? Do you need some help? Is there something I can do, you know? Just uh, maybe, maybe talk to her, calm her down. Uh, maybe that's what she needs. Maybe not. Maybe you judged her correctly with selfish motives. Who knows? But life is a lot more pleasant if you assign people non-selfish motives, the person who's behind you in line, who's anxious and, and, you know, pacing around and wants to get to the front of the line and get out, you think, well, they're just, they're just selfish. They, they want their time. They don't want to have to stand in line like the rest of us. And, you know, they think they're special and should go to the front of the line. Or we could assign them a non-selfish motive and just say, they're late for an appointment. They wanted to get a cup of coffee. It's taken forever. They're late for an appointment and they're just anxious. Leave it alone. Talk to them. Say hi. Meet them. Whatever. I saw this on the way home from, from, uh, uh, from my appointment this morning. Driving back, the light turned green and the truck that was in the front of the line did not move immediately. And the guy behind him just laid on the horn. And you could just see the expression of the guy in the truck. He, he like rolls his eyes. He looks in the mirror, looks in his side mirror. And now he's just intentionally sitting there. He's going nowhere, right? So he's like, you're honking at me? You can sit behind me for a little while. He immediately signed some kind of selfish motive to the guy behind him. Now, what if instead he thought, non-selfish motive that guy's uh, dad's in the hospital and he's rushing to the hospital to to meet up with his dad and i need to get the heck out of his way so that he can get where he's going if the guy's got a selfish motive it doesn't matter if he doesn't have a selfish motive then then you're not you're not making his life worse right so now the punchline guys here's the punchline why is it that every time Capital Games makes a change, streamers, people, gamers, all of us, we immediately assign them selfish motives? Oh, this is just all about money. They don't care about the players. They, they don't care about us, poor us, you know, whatever. We feel victimized by the big company who's just doing whatever the heck they want to do. But what if just for a second, what if just for a second... We were willing to assign them non-selfish motives. It's a business. It's for profit. If they don't make money, it's not a business. It's a charity. They're not running a charity. So let's, not, let's assign them a non-selfish motive and let's say that they want to keep this game running for 10 years. With the state that it's in, it's not going to run for another three years. The escalation, the power creep is getting out of control. They have to try to find some way to continue the power creep in order to keep people interested, but they need to do that in a way where they don't destroy the game. What if, what if we went way out on a limb here and assigned them the motive of actually being competent 
in fixing these characters so that they can continue to make new characters and continue to make the game successful. If we assign them that motive, then we can go back to playing the game and we don't have to worry about whether or not Gas is exactly as good as he used to be or whether he got slightly nerfed. We can just say, you know what? He's been put in a new place. He's not as good as he used to be. But uh, hey, mall's coming up around the corner. I'll have a mall. <clears throat> and we just get busy with building our account. <laughs> Let's catch up on the chat real quick before we do the Grand Arena. <clears throat> What's the context? Oh, that's a different question. Um, hey, DL, I'm almost at SLKR. I do have Padme and almost all the shards for JKR. Which should I go for first? I like Padme. I, I think early in the game, uh, she's very good. JKR gets you the Jedi tag, though which gets you some assault battles and some other things in the game. So that's your decision. If you want the Jedi tag, go for that. Otherwise, go for Padme. I like that team better. Don't assign maliciousness something that can easily be ascribed to incompetence. Yeah, but, but even incompetence is, is, the, is the selfish motive. It's, it's, it's the stupid motive. You're too dumb to know better, right? So, I, yeah, I get what you're saying. You never know what's going on in someone else's life exactly, Fellhammer. You don't know. So instead of assigning that they're just jerks, assign that they've got some crap in their life that's worse than the, the stuff you got in your life and give them the benefit of the doubt. Give them some help. You see, this is why DL needs to be uh, bigger on the Swiggo stream. You don't get this kind of philosophy, philosophy from Arnold. <laughs> If I get too big, though, I won't be able to give this kind of philosophy chat. I'll get all angry. Get on with the GAC. We don't want to listen to this. <laughs> uh, this is a cult, right? <laughs> uh, Darkseid says, I had to do, get, to do this to get over my road rage. I have very bad road rage. I did too, Darkseid. I, I, I had very bad... Well, I won't say very bad road rage, but when I did... Like, like, I got very angry at other people. And, uh, yeah, you just you got to learn to let that stuff go and just not let it affect you. <laughs> we assign selfish motives because we have proven time after time that they are selfish. Okay, well, uh, Wayne Atwell, if that's what you want to do, then, then you can continue to do that. But for my own mental health... I would rather just assume that there's somebody competent somewhere in there. Competent from a business side, okay? Being competent at business is different than being competent at the details of the business that you're running. And I think that's exactly what you got. I think you have people at CG who are running a business, and they're good at running a business. And, uh, you know, they, they let that interfere with the game and interact badly in, in certain ways sometimes, but it doesn't mean that they're running the business badly. A free altruism lesson on Saturday. It's not so much about altruism. It's about your own your own mind, right? It's it's not about like enlightenment or being better than other people. It's just doing things so that you're not angry all the time. You know, <laughs> there's no reason. There's no reason to have the guy honk behind you and just go you know what, I'm going to sit at this light for the next two minutes making his life miserable. That's, that's not good for anybody. That's not helping anybody. <laughs> I wonder about the greedy accusations against EA. You're right. It's like a product. Where do all the accusers work? I'll bet most of their jobs are based on companies making, making money. Yeah. <laughs> DL is the Bob Ross of Swiggo. Let it go to become an enlightened philosopher. Yeah. Now, I still get angry sometimes, guys. I, I got to admit, when my internet blew up the other weekend and I lost the stream and couldn't get back on and the, uh, you know, the guy at the cable company wasn't helpful. I mean, I, I, I was not, I, I was not a pleasant person to be around and, uh, yeah, no, I, I still, I still fight with the anger sometimes, guys. It ain't solved, but, uh, but, but being angry certainly doesn't make your life better. 
All right, enough with that. Let's get into this grand arena. We still got a feat to do, clearing territories, Dathomir natives. I think I'm locked out of Dathomir natives. All right, let's just jump in there. Take a look at the last round, Miss Kitty. This was uh, fight to the death. Miss Kitty uh, got a full clear on me, 1799 banners. Got through the ships. I was kind of surprised there. I, I didn't think that that uh, that the ships were going to fall, but uh, yeah, we lost uh, lost everything. Good news is we were able to be slightly more efficient, and they did drop one battle against the spy, so we got the win. We got the win. I always imagined that somehow my spy was just too fast, and they didn't bother looking at the speed on the spy. And got caught out by it. Ship clear was surprising on Kitty's behalf. Yeah. No, good on them. Good on them for clearing it. Bookish says, I get that they need to make money, but it's a bit r ridiculous about the amount they want. It's not. It, it, uh, so on the money side of... Oh, man. You guys are going to get me talking, and I'm going to talk too long on this. But y'all... To talk or not to talk, that is the question. All right, I'm going to talk just for a second. The value of a company is based on current revenue and projected future revenue. For a publicly traded company or a privately held company, it doesn't matter. The idea of a revenue stream is sacred. You never want to see your revenue stream going down. For mobile games like this, they have a very high profitability in terms of return on capital employed, R-O-C-E. So when you look at those numbers, you say, okay, well, they've got like 43% profit. What you don't understand is that like 56% profit is standard in this field for other people with mobile games. CG is looking at that. EA is looking at that. And, and they're not saying how much money are we making on the game. They're looking at What's our return on capital employed? It's low. We've got to keep it high. We've got to keep it up. We've got to get this uh, Rossi number back to where it belongs. Um, EBITDA earnings after uh, all of the taxes and the amortization and all that stuff is, is the lifeblood of a company. And if your earnings aren't where they need to be, people stop investing in you. The value of your company goes down. So it's not just is EA taking money away from us. It's, it's, it's complex. It's business. They have a business to run. They have profitability targets to meet. And if they don't meet those targets, we won't have a game. That's what people have to understand. When the, when the Rossi drops, when the, when the, let's say the profit margin or however you want to say it simply, if it drops below 40%, they just, the, the board member looks at it and says this is no longer a profitable endeavor and, uh, you know, uh, put it on a six-month uh, or a one-year cycle down. Don't create any new content. Just let the game bleed itself dry and then quit making it. So for what can people complain about with profitability... It's just keeping the game functional on the desk as, a, uh, as something that they're interested in continuing with. Nabokov is here. He needs coffee. <laughs> a decade ago, I was playing Lineage in a private server, and the amount of whales was too high, and PvP was unplayable. The way owners dealt with it, they introduced a free-to-play arena for PvP. So I don't think this game wants a free-to-play arena. Um, think of it as the cost of admission. If you want to play the game without paying for anything ever, then you don't get crystals from Squad Arena. That's your trade-off. You get less, crystals from squ less, less free crystals from Squad Arena. That's the price you pay for not paying anything at all to play the game. You can still get all your crystals from Fleet. There's nothing anyone can do to stop you from getting all your crystals in Fleet. Take your crystals from Fleet, take less crystals from Squad Arena, and, uh, and, th and that's it. That's your tithing. 
Okay, I, I got to get off my soapbox because uh, I'll talk about this stuff all day. My opponent here, uh, over on fleets. Let's go back for just for a second. And let's ogle at this uh, galactic power. So I'm at 1.7. He's almost 2.4. I'm fighting up almost 700,000 galactic power. That's become a trend in my matchups. So, yeah, yikes. I don't know what I've done to this. <laughs> <laughs> to get these matchups, but uh, yeah, brutal for me, brutal. Um, on fleet stuff, Houndstooth is gear 12. Whenever we see a gear 12 Houndstooth, that means we can take Geos on offense. We don't have to worry too much about using the uh, Negotiator. If it's a Relic Houndstooth, then we have to bring the Negotiator because our Anakin is the only way we have right now to deal with it. He's got a relic tie advanced B B28 bomber down here with a relic uh, relic four character, so that's a decent ship, but not too scary. We got a tie bomber down here, rebel Y wing at six stars each, and then just you know a bunch of ships. Geos are a couple gear twelve. Sunfac isn't built up. <clears throat> Capital ships we just got the standard ones, the executrix endurance home one, no premium fleet. So I feel pretty good about having an advantage in ships, and we'll put our negotiator fleet on defense. Over here on the character side, we got two two Revens, a Malak, Relic 5 Malak, Darth Vader, Relic 5, Bastila, Marauder, a bunch of stuff in the middle, Jolie Bindo, Zeta, Gear 12, um, Old Republic stuff, Dooku, Looks like he's maybe going for the Sith Eternal, bringing up Marauder like this for his Darth Revan team. Um, don't know. Kind of hard to tell. Got CLS already. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, an account like mine, except with uh, another 500,000 galactic power of stuff in the middle here. <laughs> like, like two extra rows of characters that are functional that I don't have. So, yeah, kind of yikes. Not uh, not looking to win this one, I don't think, guys. I, I think he's got me. Oh, he's playing. He's playing now. So he beat the Padme team already. I put Padme down in defense. I put this team down in defense again. It's got a relic character in it, or at least a Gear 13 character, so maybe we're scared him. Put some standard stuff over here. The Spy again. Moff Tarkin with some characters. We took that Stormtrooper out so that we could put him on uh, on offense if we need him. We put our uh, fleet over here with the Negotiator, and we put this Bomber in as one of the starting three just to give two tanks to Anakin and make this even harder to deal with. I would put it in as a reinforcement, but there's no guarantee that you're going to bring it in as a reinforcement. So then my reinforcements are all Galactic Republic, and I can just build up those characters behind those two tanks. And if they kill the bomber, I don't care. If they kill the Houndstooth, I don't care. One or the other is going to still be able to tank until I can finish it out. All right. What he put on defense... He did put the Revan on defense, but fortunately for us, there's a little HK over here. And I think this HK is going to be our ticket to potentially beating this team with our troopers. So we're definitely going to use the troopers here. We're going to try. I think I can kill HK and probably Bastila. I don't know if I'm going to kill Darth Revan or if he's going to go off on me and take out my whole team before I can get him. We're also fighting Jedi Knight Revan with Jolie Bindo with a Zeta. Now, these are only Gear 12, but this is a scary Gear 12 team, guys. This is a very functional Gear 12 team and with relics. I think, I think Enfys Nest over here, this Yoda may still be able to create some problems for us. Um, he can steal our turn meter. So, remove 
Remove turn meter and potentially stun. So I don't know how good of a fit Nest is here. If they can get both the remove turn meter and also the stun on me, then uh, I'll have a real hard time in this battle. He's about the same speed as me, so I don't think he'll be able to get around to that uh, skill. The direct focus, he has it zated. Um, the stun can be resisted, okay? So increases the cooldowns by one, reduces their turn meter, and stuns them. But the stun can be resisted, and uh, let's look at his potency here. Yeah, he's got no potency, so I will, I will resist the stun aspect of that. You know, I, I don't know 100% for sure. This stun is also resistible. So I don't think, again, I don't think he has enough potency. 44.8. So he doesn't have enough potency to stun me. Is the turn meter removal resistible? Do you need potency for this turn meter removal effect? I don't think so. But I've been mistaken about the things in the game before. I think he just removes the turn meter. All right, catch up on chat over here. In the Boca office here looking for some coffee. I don't care if EA gets their money. I just You don't screw players over. They have enough patents to literally do just that. Enough patents, enough patents. Patience? I don't know. <clears throat> Things like drops are based on spending and unethical game design can go jump in a hole. If you're going to blame them for unethical game design, it's every single mobile game that's out there. You, you, you play an idle game, it's got the same gotcha stuff. It's even worse. Raid Shadow Legends. Like, like the amount of stuff, that you, the spending that you need on Raid Shadow Legends to compete is far more than, uh, than this. Uh, Marvel, Strike Force, same thing. Everybody always accuses them of predatory practices. There's a better way to make profit without alienating potential customers. <clears throat> Can't we assign them a positive motive? Can't we assign them a non-selfish motive? I guess not. <laughs> All right, so you guys agree that EA is, is n naughty. All right. <clears throat> Tom and Black says, I think Darth Lokwater is way ahead on the Dunning-Kruger effect curve than a majority of Swigo gamers. Dunning-Kruger effect curve. Not sure what that is. Sounds like a compliment. I'll take it as a compliment. JKR has a stun and so does Yoda. They also gain speed on the lead. Yoda only has 44 potency. It is resistible. You do need potency for turn meter removal. JKR lead is a 1,000% no nest counter. JKR lead is a known nest counter. Really? Since when? What else do I have? What could I use over here? I don't have anything better than Nest. That's the problem. Like, I don't think Vader is going to do the job over there. Well, maybe with Vader with Watt, because Watt, he lost the defense thing, but dead is still dead, right? So, Enemies defeated by this character can't be revived, so anybody that Vader kills will stay dead, and Bindo won't be able to revive them. That'll allow me to go after Yoda first. So I guess I can probably Vader this. I can try to Vader it. 272. I'll have to... Uh, let's see. 272. My Vader is fast on this account. My Vader is real fast, right? Like 290-something. 
280 something 293 yeah okay so i'm i'm definitely going first with vader so i could probably vader that <clears throat> jkr has the health reduction that will kill your nest oh that's right jedi attacking out of turn reduce your health by 10 percent yep that'll kill nest That'll absolutely kill Nest. Thank you guys for saving me. I probably would have done something stupid right there. All right. So then we'll Nest this Padme team. We'll Vader this team. We'll try to Trooper his Revan. And then, uh, I don't know, bring something in against this, uh, um, against this team. Maybe some, some version with Snow Trooper. Or maybe my Bounty Hunters. Maybe I'll bring Bounty Hunters in there. Not pretty in any case. Not a pretty GAC setup. All right. Savior isn't a revive, though. No, no, no. I, I still have to deal with Savior. Absolutely. Still have to deal with Savior. But once I kill Yoda, Bindo can't revive him. So if I kill Yoda or kill JKR and Bindo can't bring them back to life, that, that's, that's important. Because, I mean, you could go in there with Vader, pop Savior, kill JKR, and then Bindo just brings JKR back, and they go ham on you, and then it's over. So I think Weapon Tech, and uh, so bring in the Emperor, bring in Vader, bring in Weapon Tech, and see what we can do. Has he attacked you more? No, he hasn't attacked me more. That's it. That's all he did. He came in, beat the Padme team, and then that's all I've seen so far. I don't see him actively engaged. Maybe he knows who I am, and he's just like, beat the Padme team and then wait and see what he does. JKR health reduction is a potency check? No. No, no, no. I... I, I I don't think there's any way that that's the case. A potency check for the health reduction? That's not a debuff, right? They're sandbag Jedi, extremely weak. They could be beaten by a variety of counters. <clears throat> All right, so... Piet goes first. We're going to put we're going to put the mark on Stark. Or are we? Forty three hundred damage, no crit chance. Let's look at our veers. Our veers is a little more. Yeah, sixty four percent with. Uh, 58. I really don't want Veers to be the one that's marked, but either it goes well for us or it's not going to go at all. Let me give speed up also, which I don't think will be that important. I can remove their turn meter with Stark. We got enough likes for the troopers, yeah. When are you planning to get Darth Dark Trooper on the Lokwater account? That'll be a while. I mean, the Snow Trooper's my slugger for now, so we'll just we'll, we we built him and we'll just use him for a while. Build Dark someday. Now I may change my mind and go build Dark. You know who knows. So Piet will go on Veers. Stark will just do buffs. Mass assist on HK and we'll kill him. We'll also take the foresight off of Bastila with this. Then I'll have three attacks. Piet will call him. So it'll be one, two. And another random assist. So it'll be three attacks, four, five. And five attacks has to be enough to kill Bastila. I think it will be. We'll be stacking up. 
And then when we get to Revan, we don't get any assists. So I don't know if we'll have enough to kill him or not. All right, I'm going to back out and make sure I've selected the right team. I don't want to make any mistakes here. <clears throat> uh, no, no room for error. Beers in the lead, Piet, Stark, battle, go. Here we go, guys. All right, target the HK. Put that on Veers for maximum damage. Buffs up. Mass assist. HK going down. All right. Now here's our big series of attacks. Nope, didn't get it. All right. Um... Yeah, just do basic. All right, Piet. <clears throat> Counterattacks, buddy. Ah, come on. <sighs> Needed just a little more damage on that Bastila. We'd have been okay. All right. I, I, I figure we can clean that up, right? I mean, it, it shouldn't be too hard to clean that up. Shouldn't be too hard. He doesn't do area effect, does he? This is area effect. Shock damage to all enemies. We just got to bring some stuff in there that can get off a hit on him. <clears throat> Need a relic eight pets to solo Darth Revan. A Relic 8 Piet can solo Darth Revan? What? Alright. I guess I'll have to take your word for that one. Long live the Sith Empire. I feel like I need to, to go ahead and, and get this done before I burn up all my good teams. So I'm going to use Vader, I'm going to use Nest. Probably going to use Bounty Hunters up top. What's even left? What's even left? To kill this one hit point Darth Revan. Bastila Jedi maybe? Maybe do Bastila Jedi. Hope that the protection up is enough that I don't uh, that I don't get shocked into the dirt before I can do anything. Next dark side GL will be forty five relic eight light side units. L S units will be forty five relic eight. LS units. Don't overkill. Use a pre-taunter, maybe. Chopper is a psychopath. He can handle Darth Revan. I just don't want him to do the area effect and just kill me. All right, let's take this Jedi team in here and see if we can scoop a clean up with this. All right. Um, let's send Ezra over there. Oh. Oh, they can't assist. They can't assist. Ah, oh, that was just stupidity on my part. That was stupidity on my part. They can't assist. Oh, boy. All right, bounty hunters to the rescue. Let, let's see if we can get a bounty hunter team in here to, to clear, clean this up. What do I have for a bounty hunter team? 
All right, boys. Let's get in there. All right. Do that. Let's just do that right away. Um, no assists. Okay, fear everybody. Shock everybody. Come on, Django. Django ain't got what it takes. Okay, so now I'm faced with a choice. I can either keep flailing against Revan, or I can just come down here and do a two-zone clear and be done with it. And I, I think that's probably the wiser thing at this point. Because in order to beat him, I'm going to have to use something pretty good. Which I don't, I don't want to do. All right, so let's see if we can clear two zones. Yep, that's what we'll have to do. Let's get this team in here. See if we can rough up some Jedi. All right. Put this on Vader. Do a Merciless Massacre. Yoda. Did that pop his... Uh... Did that pop him? This um, can't be evaded. <sighs> All right, let's give that. See if we can get rid of some uh, foresights. Okay. Yoda down. Okay, come on, Bindo. Time for you to perish. Uh, let's do this here. I know he's going to dodge it, but uh, that should give us Bindo. Just leave us Revan. Okay, got him. Good enough is good enough. All right. This Bastila Jedi team. Uh, she's got stun. What's her potency like? Nothing. All right, let's just <clears throat> let's just straight up nest this. We've got Dooku for that um, Old Republic team up top. I don't think they'll be able to get too many debuffs on him. There's not a tenacity down on that team, is there? I don't think there is. Anakin's got the debuffs on me, though. Look at, look at him go. He's got enough potency to get the job done. All right, strip off some buffs. All right, get over there on Anakin. Get him. Get her. Done. Good luck on the rest of the fights. Got to go split myself for tonight. <laughs> All right, see you, man. All right, what do we got on the back wall? Hard stuff or easy stuff? Um, Not too bad. Uh, new team that's actually... Okay, uh, that's annoying. Okay, so what... If we Dooku this...
What do we have here? We've got uh, we've got this. That's a team. Probably Mon Mothma here, though, right? I feel like that little team was doing pretty well for us. Getting good banners. Holding up okay. Can deal with the um, with the taxes pretty well. All right, let's uh, Sunfac. See if we can. Nope, nothing. Sunfac is going to take a year for me to get through. All right, pay taxes. Put a grenade on Django here. Taxes again. Taxes. Pay it. Pay it. Get it paid up. All right. All right. We've got the grenade back ready to go. Extortion yet again. 177 stacks of extortion. I don't feel like we need to use the big heel yet, though, so that's that's at least good. All right, grenade time. Get some debuffs back on these guys. Keep using the basic. Let's do this. See if we can get Django out of here. Django down. Now we'll get Newt out of here. Pay that. Um, we're going to upgrade our little guy. I'm just going to put it on auto. And see if we can kill Sunfac in under three minutes. Shouldn't be a problem. Small bits of damage. Let's see. All right, take it off of auto. Let's use the big heal. I thought that would get me more protection back on my robot, but I guess not. All right, 53. Yeah, 53 is pretty good. Your crew team available should beat the Darth Revan if you stun him. No, the crew team is on defense. They're holding down the fort on defense. Uh, I think this. Snowtrooper solo! All right, come on. Get done taking turns sometime, guys. All right, get him. Oh, no, I think he stole another banner from me. Nope, 55, we got it. All right. And then uh, first order here. got this Jin Urso team that we've been playing around with a little bit. We've still got uh, some kind of Empire team. Nope. We can do this, this, and this. Ah, sure, why not? Get in there and get her done. Only on Locator's stream you see Snowtrooper Solo. <laughs> Yeah, that's probably true for a lot of reasons. Uh, let's let's carve the armor first. Pass the turn back over to him. Drain turn meter from them. Uh, let's just get him out of here. 
Do that. Um, carve his armor again. With no armor, he's not going to stand up to much of anything. All right, let's see if we can get back around to the protection recovery. 53. All right, all right. Now, the question is, Dooku here or Dooku here? Does Dooku have any chance at... Well, never mind. None of my other teams have any chance up here. All right, this is going to be dicey, guys. I don't even know if I'm going to get this battle won. Let's shock mission. Let's uh, take off the days so that we can counterattack. Oh man, and they're getting all kinds of debuffs on me. Getting some protection back now, though dazed again big shock does nothing all right I don't think there's anything else that I got that's going to deal with this stuff so I think that's it boys I think we get a two zone clear and then we're just we're just done. We're just done. So I assume that he malik this. He malik this. So if he malik that, then he still got Vader. He still got past. Oh no, she was on defense. Geo. Geos. He's got geos. We didn't see Geos yet. Vader, Geos. He'll get me. He'll get me, guys. Yep. He's got enough stuff left in the tank that he can uh, he can get me. Yeah, but okay. We made a go of it. We'll see. We'll see how it all shakes out. See what happens when he finishes playing. Claim a couple of these feats. Got our promotion. Didn't get to play in Arena today on either account. I do need to play on ships, though, real quick for my uh, placement. So, hope you all don't mind too much that I'm going to play a little bit of ship battles here. I'll play the executor in a minute over on my main account. All right, so let's do this. We'll bring in this same configuration of ships. Yes, in we go. <clears throat> All right. The big thing to remember here, guys, if you ever end up in a matchup like this, you do not want to use your Houndstooth Taunt before the Vulture Droid goes, because then he'll just put the, the buff immunity on you. See, like right here, I could use the Taunt. You do not want to use that Taunt. Let him put the debuff on somebody else. Yeah, we'll just take this. And then we'll uh, go ahead and put them on fire. Not so much that I need to put them on fire, it's just I want that skill to start being on cooldown. Now we'll get the taunt up. Now we'll do the big area effect damage with our own Anakin. And then our first reinforcement has to be the plow. 
trying to manage some of these debuffs and damage. Get the buzz droids off that Anakin at least. Buff this up. And now there's this middle part where, yep, that's that's it. If Spy gets taunt on the wrong guy, we're done. Which happened, and we're done. Alright. Come back to that, try again later. That guy is not easy to beat. That Malevolence Fleet is... Uh, I beat it probably one out of three or four tries. <laughs> so I gotta I gotta flail a little bit to get to the top. Um All right, let's get in here with our executor. I am gonna try switching this out though. Just playing around with some stuff. Let's do that, just for now. <clears throat> so before the buff, yeah, see, I can't do that. So before the buff, um, the capital ship would go first and kind of leave you stranded. All right, we can go ahead and put a breach on him. It may be relevant later. Capital ship's going to make us assist over here. Not much we can do about that. And then uh, at this point, we could probably just put it in auto. Which is pretty sad in a way, but... All right, get them, boys. We still got the mark on them over there. Call and assist. It's a clean way to make sure you kill Anakin, but the IG dies too fast if you don't protect him. All right, we'll clear the buffs and we'll reapply taunt. We'll go ahead and put target lock on him. Target lock on him. Then uh, go back here. Okay, let's see. What do we want to do here? Let's just refresh the taunt again. Lacking in my uh, acceleration toward my finisher, looks like he's actually going to get the alt off with his ship before I get the alt off with my ship, which is a pretty horrible thing. All right, we'll do this, and we'll just try to get some damage onto the Hound's Tooth. There's the move that isn't an alt that should be an alt. And there's his ultimate. All right. Lost our taunt, lost everything. Finally got our breach up. I think we're going to lose this one, boys. Can't get the taunt going again. Now we've got to do this. Get rid of this capital ship. That stuns everybody, which is a big relief. Buys me a turn. Uh, let's try to kill Rex. We really need to get a taunt back on this Hound's Tooth so that we can uh, soak damage. All right, let's bring in Plo, get some health back. Get things stabilized a little bit. To finish off the Rex. All right, I changed my mind. We're going to pull this one out. As unlikely as it seems, we're going to get it. As long as we do enough damage in the right amount of time. 
Clear this, reset the taunt, hit him. Uh, let's, oh, marked, piloted ship and it's marked, nothing we can do here, we'll take the mass assist, don't really care about the reinforcement at this point, just keep wailing away at this hound's tooth, all right, we're recovering it, we're recovering it. Seemed lost there in the middle, didn't it? All right, here we go, guys. Don't kill Ahsoka. Oh, come on. We were one turn away from doing the second version of the alt. Balanced. <laughs> Bazinga says, balanced. Isn't executor faster than negotiator? Probably. Probably is. My negotiator isn't, or my, uh, my executor's not. <clears throat> All right, I may have to change that. I may actually have to put that second Zeta on Piet just to get the capital ship go fast. Yeah. Uh, it's ridiculous sometimes what they make you do in this game. <laughs> Let's assign a selfish motive to them for wanting to, you know, wanting me to Zeta, put the second Zeta on Piet. All right. There was a demand for more account reviews. Okay. Let's uh, have a quick look at another account. I'm going to pick one that I don't think is currently being worked on. If Nabokov is still in the chat, you can tell me. My list is... Uh, I think I'm done with my list. So... Here's a person. Rad Rick. 4.2 million galactic power. Wants to know how his mods are, mostly. Galactic Legend, Ray, and Mods. Working on Ray requirements and Hermit Yoda. All right. <clears throat> okay, any comments on this Nabokov? Oh, he's going to make coffee. All right. Well, we'll just take a look. So he's working on Ray. So we see Ray's ship here, the Ray's Falcon, anyway. He's got the regular Millennium Falcon, some good stuff up here. We got the Radis at five stars. Negotiator at five stars. This is interesting. If you're at 4.2 million galactic power and you only have one premium fleet at five stars, it means you either haven't prioritized getting these ships or you may need to think about the guild that you're in um, and try to get into a guild that'll help you get more uh, get to currency or quit spending it on gear. You know, one of those things. But uh, yeah, d d these two capital ships, the Negotiator and the Malevolence, are, are of a primary importance for any galactic power, but you're already at four, so it's a big deal. Pilotless ships keep working on all of those. Get all of these pilotless ships going. Finish them out to seven stars. Geos, resistance. Okay. So unsolicited advice on fleets. And and maybe even guild. You know, think, think hard on what you want to do there. GL Ray is in the account. Let's take a look at mods. He wanted to know about modding. He went all for health with a ten tenacity primary stat there. Offense there, speed there. 19 speed substat, 12 speed. This looks good. There's a ton of health. 
but he didn't skimp on offense. He actually did put a little bit of offense in the build. So it makes her a little more dangerous. This is good. This is good. And I do like this little bit of tenacity here with her natural tenacity and a little bit of extra tenacity. It's uh, it, it just makes it so that she's got a chance of resisting people that don't have potency. And on a character like Vader that a lot of times has 80 or 90% potency, she's still got a 50% chance to resist everything. So it's kind of a big deal. Kind of a big deal. So yeah, this is good. This is well-modded Ray. Let's look at the mods overall. Revan coming in at 317. BB-8 coming in at 314. That's good. Pretty quick little BB-8. 310 on the fin. 308 on Revan. Defense. That's interesting. Protection. So using him more as a support than a damage dealer, that's okay. That's fine, too. All right, and then Padme, I assume, is all health. Health and speed, 291. 71,000 health. I always recommend that if you're going to build a Padme like this to consider using a defense set instead of the health set as the offset because it actually does help you once you get these three all in health to have at least one defense stat somewhere. All right. So slicing materials are hard to get. That's he's saying that slicing materials are hard to get. So let's take a look at whether or not we chose wisely. One one mediocre stat line, but three good stat lines there. All good stat lines here. Um, all good stat lines here. So it looks to me like the thing that, things that you've prioritized putting the uh, the six dot slices on have been chosen well. You know, these are good mods. Nothing wrong with any of these mods. So in that regard, we're doing good. For slicing materials, I would set yourself the following standard. If you want to slice a gray mod, it better have five speed. If you want to slice a green mod, it needs to have two hits in speed. For almost everything. You know, once once you're at four million galactic power, even if it's a crit chance set and you say, Well, I don't need speed that much on a crit chance set, I would I still wouldn't mess with slicing green mods unless they have two hits in speed. If you miss it and you got a blue mod, I think blue mods need at least two hits in speed. And I think purple mods, if you're gonna slice them, you need to already have three bumps in speed. And if you watch some of my modding videos, you'll see I'll hit like I'll hit the speed on green, I'll hit blue, and I won't get speed, and I'll go to purple, and I don't get speed, and then I quit. You know, even with two hits, I'm not going to take a third hit on that mod and waste all those slicing materials to take it to gold in hopes that I get that third hit. I'm only going to take mods that have already gotten three hits to gold, and then from there to to six dot. In terms of slicing materials, most people need a lot less slicing materials than they think they need because the quality of your mods is often not good enough to be sliced anyway. So I find that a lot of people tend to just want to slice a mod to try to make it good. If you take the approach that you're only going to take mods that are already excellent and slice them, then you find that you need to spend a lot more resources on farming mods to find the good base mods that are worth slicing. But a lot of people waste materials. Like they'll come in here and they'll go, okay, this is a gold mod. It's got three speed upgrades on it. It's got health. You know, if you said, I'm going to six dot this mod, that's okay. 
you know, the the flat offense is okay. The protection's not horrible. You could you could six dot this mod, and if you uh, kept slicing it from there on the 13 speed, you'd be okay. But sometimes you see people with like nine speed here and a defense substat here, and they've already six dotted the mod, and they're trying to get more speed on it. That that's not a mod that you're going to be willing to put slicing materials into. So, I mean, it looks like this player has a good feeling for where to put that. Yeah, like this mod right here, 670 health, defense health, 10 speed. I would I would not continue slicing this because you, you didn't get that third hit in speed. Then, okay, it's good. It's good enough. It's a 10 speed mod. Fine. Um, five speed here, I wouldn't slice that. 8 speed here, blue mod, 2 hits, you can still take one more hit. If the hit to purple doesn't hit speed, you're done. You're done with that mod. It stays purple. All right. So then uh, the second advice I have with regards to slicing materials, um, I think I've said this before, but when you, when you decide that you want to slice, go in to your mods on your characters. Sort by speed. And then look for green mods that are already high on speed and prioritize those for your slicing. Blue mods that already have, you know, two good speed hits in them are okay. But, you know, in this setup, um, the first thing you're going to do is look like this 9-speed green mod. That's where it's slicing. All right, now it's a blue mod. Still only two hits in speed. I'm willing to do one more slice. If it doesn't hit speed, we're done. And we unlock that mod because someday we may want to sell it. All right? So that's, that's how I would invest the slicing materials. Uh, six speed on this mod. It's got two hits, but there are three and a three. So this is not a mod that we're terribly interested in slicing. And from there, it's pretty much garbage, right? Go down here. We've got an eight speed mod. That would be fine to slice if we wanted to put some materials there. Tenacity mod. It doesn't have tenacity substat, which makes it not a great tenacity mod, but we could still try to hit the speed on it. So these mods could all be sliced someday. This one can't be sliced. Pro flat protection, flat health on a defense mod. That's th This is just going to go on a character somewhere and probably sit at that level. Eight speed here. Tenacity, one bad stat. One kind of, I mean, we're not excited about the tenacity either. So that's a sliceable mod if you don't have something better to do. This has got crit chance on it. We don't mind defense, 8 speed, 1 throwaway stat. So that's sliceable. But that's what I would do. I wouldn't try to slice mods to force them to be better. I would only use my slicing mats on mods that are already good. Look at this guy. 11 speed on a blue mod. Let's just take a chance on that see what we get, right? Why not? Right here on the stream. One bad stat, one mediocre stat. Tenacity's not so bad on a mod that's got health. Let's see. Can we hit speed? Yeah, yeah. So now we're still interested. Definitely interested. All right. And if we wanted to take that to six dot and keep working on it, it's not horrible. It's a decent enough mod. So that's a little bit how you allocate your slicing materials. And then for the actual farming of the slicing materials, if you do three days a week on slicing materials and four days a week on mods, something like that, try to get your inventory up. Um, that's something that you can do. All right, we're going to go ahead and try to use the Hound's Tooth early this time. Even though he's going to put the buff immunity on me, we're going to keep it off of Anakin. We're going to protect Anakin at all costs. See what we can do here. Uh, let's do the big hit right away. All right, and then I am going to do the taunt. And we're going to see how badly this goes, right? Because he's going to put the buff immunity on me right away. 
Let's uh, let's do the big skill, call and assist, get some damage down on the field, get some dazes down on the field. Uh, we're gonna save the I'm gonna save the fire for now. Buzz droids on everybody. Do the hit with Anakin here. Get rid of the buzz droids. Look at that. We successfully navigated the first part without losing our hound's tooth. That's good. Bring in the plow to clear our buzz droids off of other ships. Buzz droids on there now. He ignores taunt. Where's it going? Okay, they got plow. They got plow. RNG is in my favor. Big hit from Anakin. Oh. Oh, I was about to do the carpet bombing from uh, from him as well, but we didn't get it. I think I lose taunt now. Yeah, I lose taunt. Okay, let's strip the buffs off of him. Uh, get in here on Sunfac. I'm going to take a big hit on Sunfac. Uh, let's get this out of here. Oh, we didn't get it out of here. Zoiks. All right, target him. Big attack. Kill a couple ships. Do some damage on Spy again. Ultimate. Get my fleet placement, boys. Get my fleet placement. All right. <clears throat> I sometimes balance the mods on a tune. For instance, I might be. Um, assessing a Vader mod with three hits on potency with zero speed if they have a very fast mod on another place. DL shout out to Walks with Shadows. At 3.30 a.m. he got his first watch shard. We spent about an hour talking through the mods and mechanics. A huge first step for any account. Success on the Wat Tambor mission. Congratulations, Walk with Shadows. That's a, that's a big deal. That's a big deal. Good. Is the Power Injector Ultimate Bundle worth it? Power Injector Ultimate Bundle. Let's see. Relic Materials. Injector. Power Injector Ultimate Bundle. Ultimate bundle. Okay. Equip these powerful gear pieces. One each of three power cell injectors. Enough materials to create one each. Okay. Um, 200... 300 Carbantes, 3, 56, 6 times 1,500 is 3,000, 9,000. This is 9,000 crystals worth of stuff right here already. Um, Mark V droid collars as well, which you can't buy normally and then this is a completed part right that's a completed completed part that is a good value that I'm, I'm thinking that's that's almost 30,000 crystals worth of stuff in there if you, if you actually get everything shown on the screen here, sometimes it's tricky the way they word these things and you don't get everything. Power down. Equip these power pieces. Great. One of each, yeah. So you should get everything on this screen. That's, uh, that's about double crystal value. That's, that's a good deal. That is a good deal. All right, let's get ships on my main account. Get over here, burn through that. Don't no sir, I didn't like it. Get back to this. Oh, 
All right, Executor in action once more. Here we go. Target him. And um Yeah, we can't we can't get quite what we need, but we're going to put some damage on him. Get him worn down a little bit. That tenacity up. That is a beautiful thing, that tenacity up. Alright, that this kills him, right? Not quite, but close. Alright, come on guys, get on in there. So you guys may not know this, but I had Darth Treya sneak in while we were on stream here and put a big box of tacos on the floor. So my entire room smells like Taco Bell right now. Kind of a fan of tacos, guys. I like, I like some tacos. Very hungry for my tacos. They're sitting here tempting me. <laughs> Um, uh, bu -bu -bu. yeah, let's go ahead and refresh the taunt this way. Why not? Get some turn meter, finish him off. We're not going to taunt yet. We just put the taunt up. We'll put the taunt up next turn. If there's a next turn. All right, get back all the protection you want. I'll just take it away from you again. It's all good. It's all good. One away from the alt. Let's call in this Boba Fett. Drop some seismic. Just because I love that graphic. It looks so cool. Dropping the seismic. Come on, Boba, get him. Counterattack. Do something. All right, uh, just keep refreshing the taunt. We're going to get rid of the capital ship just because, uh, yeah, no more reinforcements is good. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Will I be shamed if I buy it? Why would you be shamed? Heck no, Christopher. Nah. If, um... Uh, if you got two kids and no food in the refrigerator and no food in the pantry and they don't even have good shoes to wear for school and you spend a hundred dollars on a injector pack then you could be judged badly for it but if you've got a hundred dollars in the bank and this game is entertaining the heck out of you um, spending a hundred dollars to do what you want I don't think anybody should ever pick on you for that they shouldn't. Maybe they will, but uh, it's a good deal. It's a good value. Um, the best value that they had in the game was those gear packs and the journey guides, but they took that away. There is no gear pack in the journey guide now, so the uh, you got to look for good values in the shop just to try to find some um, find some better value in the game, you know. All right, well, let's do this and see if we can punch through him twice. Not quite. All right, guys, I'm about to show you how to beat the mirror match every time without fail. Here you go. I just won the mirror match. Yes. It's done. It's over. I've won. Thank you for playing. No more skill necessary. So, uh, yeah, there's a skill called Chaff on um, Ebonhawk, which makes everybody with that buff immune to target lock. So once you do that, he can't generate target locks, which means he can't get to his ultimate ability, 
and I will get to my ultimate ability. Oh, look, I just put chaff on my guys again. So you get two rounds of that, and I get to my ult. He can't get to his ult, and it's pretty much no way he can win. Or at least I've never seen a battle even come close after I reinforce like that. Barely an inconvenience. I got a question. Do you claim your free energy in your alt account? Um, I get my free energy. The, the, the three free energy that you get where it's Cantina, Energy, and uh, Mod Energy. I get that every day. The other two come up while I'm at work. And uh, some days I get them and some days I don't. But it's important to control my payout time. So I do payout time at around my lunch break. And then I can get in a few games and, and try to get placement uh, while I'm eating my lunch. So yeah, I miss my free energy, especially that last one in the afternoon where I get like three, uh, the, the, the third energy that just gives you 45 free energy. I don't get that on either one of my accounts usually. Too busy actually working. I'm just going to spend the 50 and just do this and get it out of the way so that we can go to the Grand Arena and get that going. Oh man, I did it again. Oh, uh, yikes. Okay, um, let's see. I think getting rid of the gauntlet's probably the right move. Is the $15 mod pack worth it? I'll go take a look at it, but I think the $15 mod pack is definitely not worth it. I'll go take a look, make sure I, I, before I'm speaking out of turn. <laughs> Cody's trying to get a roster review. All right, let's uh, let's be immune to target lock, and that way I don't have to ever have to worry about the tie bomber taunting if I don't want to worry about it. Come on, give me some breach. All right then. Huh. Got the breach on my hound's tooth. Interesting. We're just going to do basic here. We're going to save the heal and taunt for when we need it. Um. Get rid of some debuffs. Try to get this Vader out of here. It's a lot of damage, boys. Let's do this. How did the DLGAC go today? I think it's losing, but we'll see. We'll, we'll see. I think my opponent has enough to, to do what must be done and get me. But we will see. It'll be close in any case. All right, I'm going to actually give him taunt, which is really weird, but we need that extra protection on him or he's just going to die to some random effect. Okay. Um, let's just do the mass assist, and then I think we got it, right? DR held me back. Yeah, D I was I was one shot away from killing DR. Actually, I was one shot away from killing Bastila. That was the problem. If I if I had been able to kill the Bastila, then we would have been in good shape. All right, let's get into this grand arena now. We've got our fleet placement secured. Last one. We had a lot of holds. A lot of holds. Check this out, boys. Three holds, or two holds, four holds, and two holds. 
So we had, uh, what, eight holds here in total, 11 battles that he fought on my front wall. So that's pretty uh, pretty scary. Then over here he come and cleaned up a couple of these teams and then just two fails here and quit, quit playing. So uh, he spent too much on defense, I guess. I don't know what his strategy was on my offense over here. It wasn't a winning strategy, whatever it was, so we're still in good shape. Now we have Nick Dewey, L'Empire de Côte, Côte Obscure, the Empire of the Hidden... I don't know what this word is. Empire of the Hidden... something. All right, so, uh, yeah. Let's check this guy out. About the same galactic power as me, about the same split between fleets and characters. Number six in ships, so we know that this guy knows what he's doing over on the fleet side. Six-star malevolence, seven-star negotiator. Bunch of other capital ships at Relic, including the Endurance. Missing uh, the BTLB, though, that's not built up for him yet. The other pilotless ships are here, the Vulture Droid, six stars. Geos are gear 12 here. Relic Bosk. So some fleet, it's not, uh, I don't feel like I have a huge advantage or, well, let me, let me rephrase. I don't feel like I have any disadvantages. The executor gives me a huge advantage, so we'll try to make use of that. On his account side, character side, coat equals coast. The Hidden Coast. All right. Cool. <clears throat> Sith Emperor and SLKR, and his SLKR is a damaged SLKR, but uh, only 11,000 uh, offense. So interesting to see an offense set, but then like protection mods um, and stuff like that. So, yeah, I, I, I don't get this. I guess it's just for the 26 speed on an offense mod. So I I probably would put offense here. I'm not a big fan of crit damage here, but that's fine. So he's got a damage -y Kylo Ren. And then Sith Eternal, I just assume that he's going to be on offense. Lots of potency. Lots of health. Actually, not as much health as I thought. Only 100,000. Huh. Okay. He's going for a crit damage? What? Uh, what? Okay, uh, I wouldn't go crit damage on Sith Eternal. He's not really a damage dealer in that sense. He gets his ult, he kills things. And he does just fine damage with, without trying to be a crit damage character. Need more survivability on him. Skywalker is offense, tons of protection, 289 speed, 8390 on his offense. Again, offense mod set, but then invested a lot in protection stats here. Interesting. Bunch of speedy characters in the account. So it's uh Um It's an account like all the other accounts, and I know if anybody's just catching the stream for the first time, you probably don't want to hear me say that, but uh, most of the accounts that we're facing at this level are the exact same thing. They're just tons of relics. It's the same characters over and over again. It's the two galactic legends. It's Kylo plus either Sith Eternal or JML. Then Skywalker, two Revens, Malak, Grievous. It's just the same stuff over and over again. So in that regard, he's just like everybody else. All right, so for defenses, uh, yeah, we did the exact same thing that we did last time. Ooh, is he playing? Looks like he's playing, guys. He's playing on the front wall. Hasn't dropped any battles yet on the back wall. How did he do here? One shot everything. 
Okay, all right, well, let's hope, let's hope he at least used one galactic legend in the creation of that uh, victory. Got the SLKR here. So I think we're in the same boat as we were last time. We'll bring in the Sith Eternal Emperor, but then potentially have to clean it up. He has enough damage that I think my Sith Empire Trooper will be okay for triggering the stacks on the Armorer, though. So we may be in better shape. Got some Night Sisters to deal with here. Got a little Beskar Mando team to deal with. Over here, we do have the Gas. That, uh, that team is going to be rough for me. I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do here. Um, does anybody know if the Triumvirate works? Is, is the Triumvirate a good counter to this? Because I'm afraid to use my, my uh, well, half the stuff on my roster. Uh, troopers might be able to do something here, but it's scary. Scary. I'll get gas down, but it won't be a kill. And then he'll get to go. So I'm not exactly sure what it is that I'm doing against this gas. I heard CLS does well against him, but my CLS is, is definitely not maxed out. Coat Obscure is Dark Side. Oh, okay. Dark Side. Yeah, my CLS is bad. Thrawn Han Chewy works. Stun Rex, I assume. Stun Rex. Fracture. Um. Ooh. Fracture Gas? After changes, Gas 501st, now counter Galactic Legend Ray. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, so the Gas team might be where this whole thing gets hung up. But, uh, yeah, I've got to I've gotta try something. So, yeah, maybe, maybe Bounty Hunters. Maybe the Bounty Hunters can survive against that now. I don't know. Fracture Gas, yes. Thrawn Han Chewy. How do you get rid of the fives? Fives takes a lot of Bam CLS Chewy if you have them. I do have them. I do have Bam CLS Chewy. But I just I I mm. I've only got one Zeta on the Bam. This will be Mon Mothma. <clears throat> I used Tarkin, Lead, Thrawn, and Piet on a gas team to drop the clones, then had to clean up. Tarkin, Lead, Thrawn, and Piet. That was pre update, though. Hmm. Yeah, if we can figure out something to get the clones out of there. I, I wish I wish I knew if Triumvirate would work because I mean if you can can you can you isolate gas? It doesn't stop him from taunting, right? He still taunts if you isolate him. With the new nerfs, I find gas a bit more dangerous, full protection. Yeah, I think the bounty hunters are my best chance and just see if I can get to the um, get to the contract and then you know hit them with the hit them with the disintegrate. That'll be tough. 
Bosk was on defense, so that'll be a rough go. Might be the best thing that I have to try, though. If you isolate gas, he still taunts, and he loses isolate when he sits. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Well, I don't think we can use anything, but uh, we, we've got to use the Sith Eternal here to clear this. If we don't use C here, we don't have much of a chance. Let's get this one out of the way first. Sith Eternal, armor, and tank. All right, there we go. Let's get in there. And then I think we're just going to link the Stormtrooper and the... Yo, yeah, let's just do it like this. Let's, let's link SLKR. Try to get, get him to feed the turn meter a little bit. We did not get our third stack. Did not get our third stack. All right, well, maybe we'll still get around to it. Nope. <clears throat> no third stack for me. Uh, let's do that. Get protection back. Goes into the alt. Still need one more turn. We'll do this. Stop stabbing me. Oh boy. Um All right, let's just do the alt. Get them out of here. Come on, get him before he gets me. Got him. All right. All right, all right, all right. Good. Good, 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 good. In this counter, if your C is faster, you have to wait to link until after Kylo takes his turn. The link doesn't do anything to Kylo for his damage. So, it, it's just that my Sith tank is, is, is too good. He, he doesn't take 60% damage from the hit and the sweep. All right. I think my best bet against this gas is going to be the troopers. But I'm going to be way outsped. 281. 281. Only two troopers, though. So I can actually outspeed him. Okay. That changes things. That changes things. Hmm. So if I do the mass assist on him and get him to sit down, the troopers will go and take a lot of turns. C carve armor on him. The problem is I need four troopers. All right, I need Veers in the lead. I need the dark trooper. I need Gideon to manage the turn meter. And then I need Piet to link this all together. in the right way. But if we bring Gideon in, we can target gas, drain the turn meter, and get him to sit down. And then we'll be ahead of them on turn meter. 
And we just have to see then if Dark Trooper can kill fives just straight up. He has to be able to kill fives. Or we do the armor first. We don't have Piet, though. We don't have Piet. If we did have Piet, I don't think we have enough damage then. So yeah, we have to drain turn meter first. Mass assist. Dark trooper. I don't know, guys. I don't think this gets us anything. <clears throat> it puts the taunt back on set. So I, I understand what you're saying, Dark Side, but the taunt doesn't matter. The taunt doesn't matter because the turn order is Kylo, then Hux goes and refreshes, and then Kylo goes again, and then I get to take my turns. If I don't have three stacks of Beskar, I'm not, I'm not going to get them. I mean, I can't take a turn with the Armorer, even if I bring back the taunt on the Sith Trooper, he's not going to protect that uh, armor till she gets another turn. She won't get a second turn. That's the issue. So it either works the first time the right way, or you just have to take your two stacks and pray. All right. I don't think this gets me where I want to go. I, I, I don't think it gets me where I want to go. And honestly, I don't, I'm not entirely sure that the bounty hunters are going to get me there either. But I kind of want to try that. I kind of want to try the bounty hunters. They'll kill Aura way too fast. That's the problem. They'll go ham on her and then it'll be game over. If I had this set up with Bosk, it might be easier to deal with. Oh, man. This gas. This gas. All right, let's go in with the troopers, and let's just... Let's see what we can do here. You know what? Let's just... See what we can get done. The other thing we could do, we could try it with Piet. In which case, Piet goes... Links up Dark Trooper. Then I'm waiting on the mass assist. That's not... That's not going to happen. Not going to happen. Alright, let's fight it. Let's fight it out. Let's see what happens here. Alright, let's drain turn meter, mass assist, see if we can get him to sit down right away. The answer is no. All right, let's reduce his armor. Mass assist again. Get him to sit down. Uh, we'll do the big hit. And we got to kill fives. Oh boy. He's got taunt up, so I'm going to take off his protection while he's got taunt. Now we got to get back on, uh, got to get back on gas. Step on the gas. The gas has stepped on us. All 
All right, let's just leave this battle here. Rex just did his Rex late, so that's reset. I will try one more battle here with the troopers, and that's it. That's all I'm going to commit to it. And then we're just going to try to go with really clean wins on all the rest of the stuff and see if I can beat him on banners. Oh, they picked Grief. Can't stun him, right? Um, let's do this. Oh, man, Grief didn't make it. Okay. No, not going to work. Okay, that's going to be it against Gas. Gas is just going to... He's just going to win. Can't deal with it. All right, let's go over here and do Revan. Pick the team. Pick the Revan team. Get on in here. Let's uh, kill the little battle droid first. Reduce the amount of insane healing that they get to partake in. All right. Killing everything. Do a basic. We'll have Bindo use him to assist. We're actually going to use this to get Bindo to assist. Because it doesn't matter who attacks. The damage doesn't matter. Okay, Savior has been popped. We'll do that. Alright, get the buffs going. And uh, we're going to let Grievous kill him at the start of Grievous's turn. No, we're not. That would be foolish. Well, too late now. Sunk cost. Okay, swing that around, get some life back, kill him, take my punishment a second time. Should be in good shape to finish it out, though. Low banners, as always. Um, let's do this. And... Just do a basic. Bring back the Revan. Try to heal back some life and protection. Ugh, and then Yoda gets smitten. 51? 50. Not pretty. Not pretty. Sisters. What's the best thing to do against sisters? This is a simple sister team. How do I not lose banners here? Hmm. <laughs> Mon Mothma? But uh, we had a we had a team over here, right? Yeah, we need to do Mon Mothma here. We'll do that team here. Try to clean up some high banners. Against this newt, newtastic. 
One turn for Django. Pay the taxes. All right, just remember, when everyone's in stealth, then no one's in stealth. Django saved the day. Django came out of stealth. He's like, it's aight. Don't kill me, bro. All right, come on, robot. Get over there, do you think? Pay the taxes. Yell. All right, everybody's in stealth again. Let's get rid of the tax man himself. Don't want to trigger Dooku. Pow's over there standing strong. Gear 12 Pow. Getting it done. All right. I need that trooper to level up so that I can get the... The day is going on. I may want to daze that Dooku. Work, work, work. No stuns for me. Ah, there we go. Upgrade time. Got the daze. Dazed and confused. Done. 53 banners. Not bad. Not bad against the Dooku team. I hear that Sandman is problematic. Yep. I got uh, I got sand and salt to deal with. Both sand and salt. I mean, on one hand, it's like I need a 3v3 counter to gas. On the other hand, it's I, I really don't like 3v3 anyway. And the idea of building a special counter for gas 3v3 just really annoys me. Because the bounty hunter uh, gimmick is going to work just fine in fives, I'm pretty sure. When you have five bounty hunters and you can do your thing, or four bounty hunters as the case may be, All right, let's uh, steal some cooldowns. Why not? Get the officer out of here. F-O-O. -O. Put an L at the end of his name and he is a fool. Let's, uh, let's get him out of here. He's isolated, so I don't care about him right now. Done. Threat level decreased. Hell by hatred. Get back some protection. Um, don't feel like we need to re-isolate yet. Just keep hitting him. There's the lightsabers. Okay. Oh no, he's too thick. I can't kill him. He's going to live forever. Have I made a bad choice? How will I ever kill this Kylo? Got him in the yellow, boys. Got him in the yellow. Bye. <clears throat> I didn't even notice that my cat snuck onto the screen real quick. Annihilated his entire world. All right. No more battles yet. Hasn't done any more fighting. Waiting on me, I guess. Fought the hard fights and now he's waiting. You know what we could do, guys? Can Enfys Nest... Can Enfys Nest beat gas? Don't know the answer to that, but I know that we're going to try. We're going to try, like, all of these teams up against gas. 
once we're done here. Alright, we're just going to try to make it so that Watt doesn't have to die. Who do we have that can tank for this? Um, uh, uh, Alright, fine. We'll do the Emperor, that, and Watt. Be done with it. Get in there. <clears throat> they should give Maul held by hatred. Maul has to scream, Kenobi. Kenobi! Ah! Alright, let's see if we can call this Daka in one hit. Look at that. Look at these nerfs to Vader. Look how nerfed Vader is. Oh my god, so nerfed. Looks pretty good up against some gear 12s, doesn't he? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> All right. What do we got here, even? This is another one of those teams that's, like, deceptively better than it looks because of Queel. What do we have that can regain protection? That's the big thing. We need protection to be regained. We've got CLS. We've got some kind of Mando team. Can CLS just come in here and blow this up? Target Quill, nuke him, kill the rest of it. Don't worry about it. Excellent banners. I think we're going to do that. We'll do this. We'll pop in CLS. Save Bam Han and OG Chewy. Oh, didn't quite get him. I didn't see your comment before I started this. My, you gotta remember though, my BAM is terrible. I haven't done anything for his mods. He's got one Zeta. Let's give this a try. Oh, out she goes. Get in there, nest. Just put it on auto. Yikes. I was hoping to hoping to deal with at least one clone before that happened. You can't kill Rex. Five would sacrifice and I'd still have to deal with Rex.
Should have gone after Rex manually. Guys, if I kill Rex... Let's see. Hand wave. Two turns of cooldown. Ugh. If I kill Rex, five sacrifices himself and Rex gets better. I mean, then I only have Rex to deal with the next time, but... In 3v3, you have to kill Rex before fives. Kill Rex so fives isn't there next time. Yeah, fair enough, I guess. I just don't see myself killing this team with turn meter. You know, that's the issue. Maybe there's something here. I just, I don't know what it is. Okay, well, in the future we'll kill Rex and get the sacrifice then, I guess. Yeah. I, I just, I don't see anything else here that's even remotely going to work. I mean, we could try. We have our own racks, right? We could try soaking damage and killing the fives this way. Try Chupio as a third for the Beskar team? W uh, what? Chupio as the third. What? what? I don't understand what you guys are even saying. Do not understand the words coming out of your mouth. Only 15 more turns to a Rexalate. Yep. I got nothing. Bam Quill Chupio. Why? Chupio's not going to get any assists because they're not rebels. He's not going to sh that share because the leader's not. Why Chupio? I mean, I'll put it in. It's not going to do anything, but I'll put it in. I did clear the front zone, didn't I? Holy cow. I am so not paying attention in a, in a meaningful way in this GAC. Oh, man. Whew. A whistling bird. All right, this is just done.
All right, there's there's nothing to be done here. If there's a counter that I should have used, I just don't know it. Not good enough with it. All right, I think we'll take the finalizer fleet against the rebels. We'll take the executor up top. We'll pick Hux. Let's back out for a second, guys. Yeah, that's best. That's best. We'll pick Hux. SF tie. We'll bring this in because I always like to bring that in. We'll bring Plo in because I feel like I need it here more than the other battle. The other battle is. Finalizer. That's not going to matter. Okay. That's all I should need. I mean, I, I, I don't feel like I need anything else. Tough day, take it on the chin. Well, he still hasn't played yet, so I don't know how tough of a day it is. Because he's only played out a little bit, and he, he did put a lot of stuff on defense. So it may be that uh, it may be that he gets a little stuck himself. I do have the SLKR of my own on the back wall. I'm guessing that he probably had to use C if he beat everything that I had on that front wall in one shot. Um, I'm pretty sure there had to have been a C against probably the Padme team. So with that in mind, I mean, maybe we're not out of it, you know. Let's just keep calling assists here. Get him. All right. What you got, Phantom? Tell you what you got. You got nothing. I'm about to wreck you. Use the basic, call an assist. Uh, we don't have our... Don't have our advantage. Oh, I thought that was going to kill it. Now we do have advantage. Plow time. It's plow time. Let's uh, let's take turn meter over here. Do this. Pass the turn back to Kylo. We'll make him taunt. And this should be it. That should be it. What? Dodged. Dodged. Try again. 63. Missed the tank on my SLK mirror and went from there. Lost by 80 banners. Sorry to hear that, man. Alright, let's do bounty hunters. And let's uh, fill this starting lineup. And then let's do that and that. I'm just going to fill the whole lineup. I don't need that, do I? I don't need any of that. Just get in there. We'll blow up the silencer and then that's it. The silencer shall be removed. Oh. Oh, hunted. He's got me hunted, boys. Mass assist. Game over for silencer. Get out of here. Not even interested in you. Sith Marauder goes down next. What? 
That didn't kill him. I find that sus suspicious. Not auspicious. Suspicious. Um, let's see if we can get a stun on him. Prevent some of the crazy counterattacking from going on. Oh, we lost 20% turn meter. Yuck. All right. That's fine. Let's, uh, let's put the stun on him still. Get a mark on him. Uh, let's heal him up. See if we can get max banners. Uh-oh. That's a lot of lost protection, boys. That was a lot of banners he just stole. No, sir. I didn't like it. 63? 65. Stole three banners from me on that one hit. If I lose this by three banners, I'll be upset. But okay. So he's got to break through that. And he's got to get ships. 232, 186. Yeah. So basically, once he beats this team, he wins, right? Beats that team, beats a couple of the lesser teams on the back wall and gets the victory. Okay, well, we'll see what he does. We shall see what he does. I, I, I certainly don't think he's finished playing. That, uh, that doesn't seem right. People usually aren't finished playing until they've dropped a couple battles here and there. Alrighty, guys. Well, we've been at this for two hours and 40. Does anybody have any last questions before we wrap up the stream for the day? Dark side, my Relic 8 GG saved my GAC. Relic 8 Grievous. Salty. That's nice. All right, guys, I'll wait just a second to see if anybody's got any last-minute questions, and then we'll hang up the stream for the day and be done with it. And I will eat a bunch of tacos. <laughs> no other questions. Chat is silent. All righty then, guys. Thank you all for watching. I appreciate you all very much. Thanks for spending your time with me listening, watching, whatever you do. Remember to hit your like saber on the way out if you haven't done so already. We uh, have a great Discord. I brag about it all the time. For anybody who's not an active part of our Discord, get on over there. Even if you don't want to participate, you can just sit around in the background and uh, listen and watch and see what other people have to say. There's plenty to be learned. Thank you all for your time, and I will catch you in the next holocron. <laughs>